Hey, welcome back. Today we're checking out Sanguinarium, episode 6 of season 4. And just as a bit of a warning, this one is a little on the gross side. Sanguinarium debuted November 10th, 1996, and follows Mulder and Scully as they investigate bizarre deaths at a cosmetic surgery clinic that may have ties to witchcraft. The episode begins as a nurse, Rebecca Waits, prepares a woman who's about to go in for liposuction. The surgeon that's going to be performing said surgery seems to be a bit on edge, and I understand you need to clean and sanitize before surgery, but not to the point where you remove all three layers of your skin. How did nobody notice the bloody fingertips? Also, I like my surgeons to work in as little light as possible. Easier to not see anything that way. The doc begins the liposuction in what is one of the most stomach churning scenes in the entire series. There's been some gross stuff in the X-Files so far, but this might take the top spot. Is the doctor gonna be much longer? I think my tranquilizer is starting to wear off. But that's strange. If the woman he's supposed to be liposuctioning is still waiting for him, then who is he working on? Uh, I think this guy here is for a hair transplant. The doc just goes to town on the poor guy, and I'm gonna take a stab and say he probably didn't make it. Mulder and Scully are brought in and the surgeon claims he wasn't in control of his body, which triggers Mulder because he immediately suggests that maybe it was demonic possession. I would like to reiterate that I've advised my client against speaking to you, and I'd appreciate it if you would direct any legal discussion to counsel. Oh, well look who it is. I think Mr. Attitude here is a little butthurt that Scully never took him up on that second date. Look, don't take it out on them. You're the one who fumbled the bag, dude. They didn't really get anywhere with their interview as butthurt Rob won't let his client say a damn thing. Scully thinks that the doc was off his rockers due to some sleeping pill usage. He's apparently been taking quite a few of them lately and they're highly addictive. And I don't think Mulder is even paying attention because he seems more interested in one of the nurses than what Scully is talking about. 19 100 tablet refills. Wow. Mulder isn't buying her theory that the doc was under the influence of sleeping pills. No, instead he finds five marks on the floor and decides to play connected dots with the poor dead man's blood. Hmm, looks like a pentagram to me. Clearly this is the work of the devil. Scully thinks the more likely cause is medical malpractice, and I'm gonna side with her. I mean, medical malpractice is something like the third leading cause of death in the world, so it's hard to argue with her. I'm not a doctor, Scully, but you gotta be pushing pretty hard to mistake a beer belly for a bald head. He does make a pretty convincing argument though. They speak with Nurse Waits, but she doesn't really give them much to go on. She helped prep the patients, but what else is she supposed to do exactly? I also don't think she's buying the possession theory. Meanwhile, the doctors are having a little meeting and acting very suspicious, almost like they may have an idea as to what's going on. Either that or they're doing some other shady business and are now worried that the FBI are sniffing around. Also, why does their table have a five-pointed star? Hmm. I'm afraid to be put to sleep. What, what if I don't wake up? Not to worry, not to worry. I want you to relax. Leeches? The poor woman just said she was there for a chemical peel on her face. Also, five of them? I'm starting to think the nurse may have something to do with all of this. Mulder invites Scully over so they can watch a special tape together, and oh, it's just the footage from the liposuction. Scully is pretty horrified, as anyone would be, but Mulder points out the markings on the floor. Usually, a pentagram is a good thing, a mark for protection, but in this case, Mulder believes it could have something to do with black magic or witchcraft. An antispasmodic whose active ingredients include belladonna alkaloid. Belladonna. It's also known as witch's berry. That's an herb used in hexing rituals. Mulder, do you know how many pharmaceuticals listed in the PDR contain belladonna? I did not say it! Mulder, do you know how many pharmaceuticals? <laughs> <laughs> Damn! It's okay, Scully. Do you know how much trouble I had saying multiple personalities in the previous video? Mulder's going out on quite the limb, but the sleeping pills the doc took carry an ingredient that Mulder believes is used in hexes. Back at the hospital, and another one of the doctors is acting really weird. 
giving quick one-word answers, almost like he's under a spell. When Dr. Shannon tries to open the door to her operating room where a patient is awaiting a laser appeal, it's weird because the door just won't open. Well, it turns out the other doctor lost his damn mind too and gave the patient a laser appeal all right, just straight through her skull. Conveniently, he doesn't remember what happened, but strangely, he's also taking those same sleeping pills. Mulder points out the five markings on the patient left by the leeches, so he's 100% convinced there's some spooky shenanigans going on. It appears we've interrupted a gathering. Gathering. Oh, Mulder, you little jokester. The doctors are having another meeting and again acting very suspicious until Mulder and Scully decide to barge in and ask some questions. A doctor, Jack Franklin, starts to tell the agents that some spooky things have been going on as of late. Ten years prior, there were some nasty deaths that were all ruled accidents and the same thing appears to be happening again. But interestingly, Nurse Waits just happened to be around and have contact with every single person involved in these accidents. So they're very clearly throwing the suspicion down on her and away from themselves. Meanwhile, at the haunted mansion, Nurse Waits is topless and performing a spell or hex of some kind. Not sure why she has to be topless, though. Probable cause. And the suspicion of being a witch? Mulder and Scully arrive at her place, and having a broom and pentagram on her door are all the evidence they need to break into her home. Definitely by the book. While they're going through her underwear drawer, Dr. Franklin arrives home, but weird, the power seems to be out. He could check the fuse box, but nah, better see what's going on upstairs instead. Hmm, everything seems normal. Bloody handwriting on the mirror, bathtub full of blood, nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> How long was she holding her breath for? Nurse Waits tried attacking Dr. Franklin, why I don't know. He seems like such a nice guy. She tries for a second time, but he manages to subdue her. Police arrive and are taking her away, but before that can happen, she starts to vomit up pins. How they got inside her is anyone's guess, although Scully thinks she swallowed them. See, there's nothing. God, go! Oh, uh, yeah! Oh, boy! This thing is shredding my insides! Dr. Franklin appears to be in good spirits, but Mulder, on the other hand, makes some offhanded remarks that suggest this whole thing might not be over. And he might be right because Dr. Franklin appears to like resting above his covers. Four feet above his covers. Our suspect, Rebecca Way, was pronounced 20 minutes ago. Rebecca died due to all the needles in her stomach and Scully's explanation? Maybe she's one of those extreme eaters you'd see on TLC. Mulder offers up a spookier explanation that maybe she just spontaneously upchucked the pins. He also thinks that maybe she was actually trying to protect the victims. Rebecca had a calendar which marked off the various birthdays for each victim, with each one following on a witch's Sabbath. Mulder now thinks that Dr. Franklin may be responsible and that Rebecca knew what he was doing and was trying to prevent it. With FBI sniffing around, Dr. Franklin acts like he's all tired, so one of his colleagues tells him to go home because they can't afford any more accidents. Dr. Franklin's already left, but his office confirms that one of his patients has a birthday which corresponds with one of the Sabbaths. Dr. Franklin's patient has come in for a little skin peel, and I'm sure everything will go swimmingly. Although I don't like the way the doctor looks at this bottle of acid. Mulder and Scully arrive just in time to find the patient having her face melted off. What kind of acid was he using? Xenomorph blood? Dr. Shannon seems more concerned with what will happen to their practice and income than what's happening to the patients. The hospital kept all the deaths hidden from the public because the revenue generated was too great to shut down. Are you telling me the medical industry would put profits over people's lives? Oh, come on now. There's no way. There were five deaths? Yes. Turns out there was a fifth victim ten years ago, and it was one of the doctors. But Mulder thinks there's something suspicious about it. So they throw the doc's image into a super-powered 90s computer, and with the magic of some cosmetic surgery program, well, look at that. It's Dr. Franklin. And surprise, surprise, he's gone missing. Mulder now believes Dr. Franklin is killing these people as some kind of blood sacrifice so he can change and I guess be young again? But how did Dr. Franklin make it back to the hospital without anyone noticing him? And if he needs these tools to do his little transformation, why not just have some at home on the ready? So, you know, you don't need to go back to where you can be seen by people. 
see his stupidity got him caught. But he just teleports the instruments into Dr. Shannon's stomach, so that was all pointless. Despite it clearly raining outside, Mulder and Scully walk right into Dr. Franklin's home perfectly dry. They find another pentagram, but as Mulder points out, it's inverted, and carved into it are the names of all the victims, including Dr. Shannon. While Dr. Shannon undergoes emergency surgery, Dr. Franklin reenacts his favorite scene from Face Off. Mulder and Scully arrive at the hospital, and while Mulder runs off to find Dr. Franklin, he tells Scully to prevent that surgery from happening for as long as she can. I don't know how she's gonna do it, it's not like she can just waltz in there. Scully tells someone she's a medical doctor. You have to stop this procedure immediately. Whoever that person is, get her out of here now. I'm Special yes, Agent Dana Scully, I'm an FBI agent. Get out of here now! Listen to me, I'm a doctor! While Scully contaminates an operating room, Mulder finds a very bloody room, but no sign of Dr. Franklin. Well, unless you count his face. When Mulder gets back to Scully, Dr. Shannon is saved, but it looks like she was nothing more than a decoy, as another unrelated patient is killed in another room. October 31st, Halloween. And Samhain, the fourth witch is Sabbath. I hate to be this guy, but actually, it's pronounced Sawin, not Sam Hain. Get it together, Mulder. And in an interesting twist, the agents don't actually solve the case. Dr. Franklin disappears and starts his nonsense all over again in Los Angeles. I wonder if he's the one that butchered Starlight. Sanguinarium is a pretty gory little episode. The story is kind of lacking, and David and Jillian seem to be going through the motions with this one, but the gore kind of makes up for it. It almost feels like an 80s slasher film where you're just waiting to see how they're going to off the next victim, while the story basically takes a back seat. It's funny to see how in previous episodes, the producers had to cut down on a fight scene between Mulder and X because it was too violent, but now it's free reign. I guess once you do an episode like Home, it's pretty much open season for any kind of nastiness you want to do. Jillian wasn't really a fan of the episode because of its gory nature, but David seemed to enjoy it despite claiming the story made little sense. Despite how gory it is, the censors did come after them. They sat down with the producers and they literally went frame by frame and told them how long they could linger on a shot and what needed to be trimmed. But Chris Carter fought and argued with them and pretty much everything they wanted to keep in the episode stayed in. The producers didn't just have the censors breathing down their necks, but also Wiccans. They received a lot of hate mail from practicing Wiccans who felt the show was making a mockery of their beliefs. They lashed out at the writers Vivian and Valerie Mayhew who were confused by the backlash because they never intended to offend anyone. They never claimed any character in the show was Wiccan or belonged to any set of beliefs. The two sisters had never written an hour length piece of television before and found the entire thing to be a good learning experience, if not a bit bumpy. They struggled at first, but went to Glenn Morgan and James Wong for a bit of help. Glenn and James gave the two the advice that everyday things tend to be the scariest things. And during this conversation, Vivian was paged on her pager by a number she did not recognize. She called the number and that's when the wheels began to turn. The person that called could have been anybody. This kind of made pagers scary because who knows what kind of person could be on the other line. But then they took things one step further. Who, at the time anyways, was most likely to carry a pager? Well, doctors for one. Nobody likes going to the doctor or the hospital. But what if these doctors that we're supposed to put so much faith in suddenly lost control, influenced by some outside force? At this point, the idea of the spooky pager was long gone, and now the focus was entirely on the doctors. They took their idea back to Glenn and James, who gave them the advice of changing their villain from a woman to a man. Because from the sisters' recollection of the meeting, the two writers said, They told us, Turn it around again. Plastic surgery is about vanity. You expect vanity from a woman, but not from a man. Yeah, no way a man would ever be vain. They took their finished script to Chris Carter and the other writers, who approved for it to be an episode. However, they had to help tighten things up a bit. Chris Carter, Howard Gordon, and Vince Gilligan all helped to bring it all together, with Chris being credited with bringing the themes of greed and vanity to the forefront, Howard Gordon for including some of the more graphic elements, and Vince Gilligan for naming one of the doctors, Dr. Shannon, based off of one of his favorite actresses, Shannon Tweed, though I'm not sure it's because of her acting. There was a little bit of subtlety at play in this episode as well. Obviously, we have the not-so-subtle pen 
anagram that was on the doctor's table in their meeting room, but something most viewers would never pick up on are the five operating rooms that are all laid out like a pentagram. Each operating room has five sides like a pentagram, and they even designed the sinks where the surgeons scrub up to be five-sided as well, even though they're never really shown. Olan Jones, the actress who played Rebecca Waite, was originally named Rebecca White, based off someone the Mayhew sisters knew. However, for whatever reason, they were not allowed to use the name because it belonged to a real-life nurse who worked in Chicago where the episode took place. They changed the name to Waite last minute at random, but the naming of the character has led to some speculation that it's a reference to a woman named Rebecca Nurse, who was accused of witchcraft and executed during the Salem witch trials. There is also speculation that she was named after after the Rider Waite tarot deck, which is one of the most popular tarot decks in the world. But both of these things were just coincidence and not intentional. And for a bit of fun trivia, Dr. Franklin was played by Richard Boehmer, a longtime actor who appeared in Twin Peaks as Benjamin Horn and the 1961 movie West Side Story as Tony. Sanguinarium currently has a 7.3 on IMDb. I think it's a pretty solid episode, but the gore will probably be off-putting for some and the lack of story for others. Still though, I think a 7 is a good rating. And if you want something a little darker and nastier, especially since we're in the spooky season now, then this is a good one to watch. Up next is a very interesting episode as we get more insight into just who the hell the cigarette smoking man is and musings of a cigarette smoking man. So what do you think of Sanguinarium? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you're having a great day and stay spooky. This hospital has a strange way of losing patients. You basically stabbed the man to death in his sleep. Is it human error? The shape of a pentagram. Or human sacrifice? <laughs> a brand new X-Files, Sunday at 9, 8 central. The doctor is out there. I think this patient is finished.